Executive producer, David Alpert. Executive producer, Gail Ann Hurd. Executive producer, director, special effects wizard, Greg Nicotero. And a uh, guy you may have heard of by the name of uh, Rick Grimes, Andrew Lincoln! And because we had to sit them right next to each other, Jeffrey Dean Morgan! Oh, it's nice to see him hugging it out. Uh, as Carol, Melissa McBride. Morgan himself, Lenny James. As Dwight, Austin Emilio. And her first Comic-Con panel with The Walking Dead ever, please welcome as Enid, Caitlin Nacon! As Jesus, Tom Payne! And, uh, and then uh, I think there's a guy back there by the name of, uh, is that Norman Reedus back there? Norman Reedus! <laughs> Your 2017 Walking Dead cast! That was very good. All right. I mean, this is really incredible. I mean, you guys, you, you all have to know that we all know that this is incredibly rarefied air that we are in, that you would all wait in line, come here, fill up Madison Square Garden. It, even just being a small parasite on the underside of the walking dead whale. Oh my gosh, that is the best thing I've ever seen. That is the... Wait, we have bring him out. Bring, bring him, him over on. here. Bring him up. Bring him up here. Look at that. All right. Wow, look at that. Matthew, give a huge hand for Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, can you see out of that? Can you see okay? Your costume is amazing. Thank you for being the number one Walking Dead fan, my friend. You've crushed it. Well done. Incredible. Yeah, suck it, Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> I just like to create factions. I just like to create factions. Um, I want to start with Gail. I mean, it's coming into the eighth season, 100 episodes. You know, there were so many moments where I'm like, oh, yeah, that and that and that. What does it feel like for you having been a part of this since the beginning? It's, it's overwhelming. It is. Um you know, the, the most important thing is we do it because you give us, all of you give us the energy to keep doing it. Your passion, your support, your love, um, your tears when we lose a loved one. Um, it, that's what really we're feeling tonight, that 100 episodes are only because of your support. So thank you. For, uh, for David Alpert. Obviously, issue 100 was a very big issue in the Walking Dead uh, comic universe. And now we're at 100 episodes. And did you ever envision that we would reach 100 episodes? Or what, how, how do the two compare? 
well, you know, it was uh, a little over 15 years ago, Robert called me. He goes, oh, you know, I got this idea for this idea for a book. And I was like, oh, what, what, what's it about? He goes, it's like a, it's like a zombie story, but it, like, it never ends. It's like picks up where the zombie movie leaves off. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. What, what else are you doing? So <laughs> it was, I never anticipated. A man the, of vision. <laughs> <laughs> from, from that conversation, I never anticipated that the book would go to 100 issues. And when we got there, I felt like that was a pretty amazing milestone. And I remember opening up the book when I saw it, and basically that that one scene just really, like, is one of the grossest panels I've ever seen in my life. You know exactly which one I'm talking about. And um, I never really fully recovered from that. But the idea that we'd hit 100 episodes is just something we never anticipated. So it's pretty awesome. And <laughs> the well, yeah, let's. Why stop at 200? <laughs> Why limit us? A thousand. Let's do a thousand, you guys. One million episodes! <laughs> Welcome to Talking oh. Dead. I pooped myself again. I'm on 90. Um, Obviously, you, you, you've created this universe, and then we expanded the universe. You expanded the universe with Fear of the Walking Dead. And, uh, but you guys are pretty adamant early on that those shows are never going to cross over. Are you, are, you liter are you really never going to cross these shows over? Never. Never. No, no, no. Look, all joking aside, I'm really excited because, you know, I get that question all the time. I'm sure. And the question was, you know, we want these shows to, to have their own legs and tell their own stories and, and be their own thing. And, and I think that we've finally gotten to a place with Fear the Walking Dead where it has its own identity where we can, uh, you know, we can play with some things. So what I'm going to say, and this is all I'm going to say, is that there are two Walking Dead shows. I'm not going to name them, but there are two. Okay. There is one character that is going to go from one show that I will not name and, I, and appear in the other show, which I will not name. Now, what does that mean? Because these timelines, like, how does that work? Are we going to see an interesting backstory of a Walking Dead character? Showing up in Fear the Walking Dead. That Why are you sets asking up some me? I'm the after things. show. I have no. I'm hyping, man. Oh, Calm do down. Okay, I'm sorry. I got very excited. Don't harsh upset. my hype. I'm harshing it. No. All right. Or are we going to see a Fear the Walking Dead character show up in Walking Dead and see a future version of a character? What could happen? Is it going to be something completely different than that? I don't know. I Who don't knows? know. Answer me, Chris! I don't know! What's it gonna be? I just want the phone to ring and be like, Daryl, it's your cousin, Madison Clark! You know that new sound you've been looking for? <laughs> but, guys, 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 this is a huge event in the world of The Walking Dead. We're very excited about this, and there's gonna be some more news on this front in the coming months, so please stay tuned to what they call the internet. Yep. Or, or the papers. And you will find out more about this stuff, but it's, it's going to be huge. We're all very excited. Excellent, excellent. Huge news, huge news. Uh, but without any resolution just yet. You and your damn cliffhangers. Um, Greg, uh, congratulations on directing uh, some of the finest episodes in the Walking Dead universe. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what, what, what has this journey been like for you, and how have you managed to keep you know, to keep pushing boundaries with special effects while continuing to focus on single episodes within the storylines? Well, it's, uh, you know, the first episode I ever directed was the episode where Dale was killed. Right. Uh, I just finished my 24th episode on Thursday night. And uh, it is equally terrifying and thrilling every time you step on set uh, because you have the, the responsibility to you guys to continue to keep the show exciting, to continue to keep the show thrilling, to come up with great uh, ideas for zombies. So it really, you know, in the 30 years that I've been doing this, it's a show that continues to keep me uh, inventive and imaginative because the writers come up with some crazy shit stuff, sorry. Uh, sorry. If you're offended by that word, like... No, well, there's a key. You know. Yeah, I know, but if he, he right. watches Walking Dead, he hears the S yes. word all the time. That's true. Don't uh, listen to this shit, kid. <laughs> So uh, listen, and, and we, I get to go to some amazing places with these actors, and they continue to astound me with what they bring to the characters. And I've 
watch them all laugh and cry and be victorious. And it's, it's an amazing experience for me because I've been there since day one and to continue to do it and to continue to shoot a great scene that I shot Thursday night and go home feeling like you guys are gonna see something amazing. Uh, it's thrilling. So uh, I wanna start with, uh, I wanna start with Mr. Rick Grimes. Uh, <laughs> Season seven was really emotionally difficult for fans because no one, no one wants to see the group be uh, held down by anyone. And that was pretty much season seven, was you guys coming to the realization that the world is much bigger and more dangerous than you thought. So how yeah. are you feeling coming out of that and going into season eight where it seems like the tide is about to turn? Oh, I'm so thrilled about <laughs> this. I, uh, yeah, season seven sucked for Rick Grimes. And, uh, but, you know, season eight, um, he's definitely getting his um, strut back. Good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he is. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been so much fun. The season has been hard because every episode has been so big and it moves very, very quickly, story. But, um, yeah, we've got the gang back together. I'm working with um, a few of my special buddies. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just, it feels like it's reminiscent of seasons one through four. It's, uh, and we just finished this, oh, I'm not supposed to say that. I wasn't in the episode that he just directed. I was watching. I was in the episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was amazing, and you know, I just want a, a quick mention, obviously, to you guys. This is a hundred episodes. This is a long time, uh, and it is because of you guys. But it's also because of the crew. We have the most astonishing group of people that aren't here and don't get to feed off your incredible energy. And uh, yeah, yeah, and it is true. And, and, and these guys, we do it for those guys. A lot of the time I look in their eyes and, you know, at, after a 16 hour day, and I just go, I love you guys. Cause they care. They, did, you, did, you see, did you see my entrance? You see the, cause it was, do you know what movie I was trying to emulate? That wasn't, I didn't do that in Love Actually. <laughs> Was well, it the disco version of Love Actually? Dirty Stay. Dancing? No, was no. Was it Michael Jackson's Who bad video? Yeah, okay. <laughs> do, do, the, do the quote, do the quote. Do the oh, don't do that to me again. <laughs> do the dance! Do the dance. Do the dance. Wow. So Greg's gonna, you're gonna do a quote? Dance, 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 dance. Well, oh, wait, Andy's out. He's out for season eight. He's out for season eight. Why did you do that? <laughs> oh yeah, you're missing this whole worm thing going on. <laughs> it's weird, Andy Lincoln quit Walking Dead and went into clowning full time. He became a professional clown. I'm so sorry, I don't know what's What that. movie was that? Uh, Napoleon. Yeah. What? Oh, it was Napoleon what Dynamite. It was Napoleon Dynamite. Um, what is it called? Oh. We, were, we were on set the other night quoting Galaxy Quest for about two hours. It was Galaxy Quest? And, and when they all come out on stage, and he's oh. like, we should do that on Sunday. And I was the only one and who did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, last night at dinner, Norman was saying like, oh, uh, let's tell Jeffrey everyone's coming in tuxedos. <laughs> but then no one else come in a tuxedo. Sorry, and then you and Norman, are you still glitter fighting all the time? A Andy, are you and Norman Andy, still? Andy. Are you still glitter fighting? We haven't in a while, but it may be coming soon, I don't know. It's been a minute, I love you too. It's been a minute. <laughs> love you back. So, for, for Jeffrey D. Morgan, Jeffrey D. Morgan. I mean, by all rights, Jeffrey. Yeah. By, by all rights, uh, Negan is the uh, most treacherous force they've ever come up against. He's murdered 
a lot of people and some of their friends, and yet you see what happens when you walk out. People adore you. So... Thank you. What, uh, what is it about Negan? What is it about Negan that you think is so captivating? Like, the worse he gets, the more people embrace him. I mean, I think he's funny. I think he brings a certain humor. What? He's a sexy asshole. And a sexy ass. Wait a uh, I wasn't that... gonna go there on my own, so thank you. Is that what she said? I swear to God, I'm not making a joke. I swear to God, I thought you said you have a sexy asshole, which is very specific. I swear to God, I thought that's what you said, and I didn't understand. Like, is that what people are, is that what kids are saying now? That's what Andy thought they said, too. Uh, that's what you thought, you thought the same thing. You thought this, he thought the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I think it's his charisma and sense of humor. I think in this world, he brings a little... Brings it. A little, he brings, yeah, he brings it. He brings a little special spice to his, his deal. What do, you think, uh, what do you think Negan's backstory is? And, you know, are you, gonna, are you excited to try to explore that? Man, I, I think this year we get to explore little slivers, and I'm only saying this because Scott Gimple said it um, on TV already. Right? I was there. He did, yeah. I won't say anything different than he said. We get to see some slices of kind of what Negan's past is. And other than that, R Robert wrote an awesome comic book that's out, like, today, right? Thank, thank you so I mean, much, Jeffrey. There's the feed. Yes. <laughs> no. Please go to your local comic book shop or bookstore, or even on Amazon.com, and buy uh, Walking Dead, Here's Negan, to read uh, Negan's yeah. backstory. Yeah. Which gives the whole backstory for Negan, which yeah. is a really cool journey. Um, and no, I don't know if we're going to ever do it, but I sure as hell hope so. So what is it about Negan that you, that, some before, what do you think it is about Negan so much that makes people love him and worship his sexy asshole? I can't even, I can't even, like, go there now. Yeah, <laughs> you win. You can't even add a cherry on top of that pie. <laughs> you have to pay I, I just want to state for the record that it's just okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some people were generally like, hey, that's not cool that Kirkman said that, man. Uh, but is it, you know, is it just, do people just love a good charismatic villain? Yeah, I think that they, they, Robert created this guy that it's hard to not like him, regardless of what he does. Um, and there is a sense of humor and charisma that he has that is unlike certainly anybody in this apocalyptic world, and he has a certain flair and panache that uh, I think is needed. And, and he's so different from everyone else that we see in this world. Um, that it's hard to hate him. And he's fucking smart. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think when it comes right down to it, he... I kind of hate him. <laughs> but you notice he said, kind of. You he's also get real... On me. He gets growing. real close to me when he talks to me. Real, like... That's not true. You it's like that Seinfeld character. First. Like, close talker, Rick. Close talker, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> it's because my nose is so big. I have to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to ask Melissa because uh, <laughs> Carol. Thank you. Whoop. <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, Carol is our spirit animal because Carol is someone who, Carol is someone who has survived all of the worst things from before the apocalypse to after the apocalypse, and she always comes out in control. She's an incredible leader. She can work on her own. She's trying to get work with the group again. So do you think she is, like, having traded in the cookies and the cardigans for, you know, body armor, is she, is she ready for what's coming now? Is she ready to fight? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank God. Yes. But that doesn't mean she's not going to be baking. <laughs> okay, good. Something. What is your favorite... What is your favorite... Ooh. 
Oh, did ever, is everyone like, whoa, is that what that is? She's baking something, whoa. Baking something. Carol's Edibles. Uh, <laughs> here you go, kids, take a nap. Uh, <laughs> like, no one's just ever tried to smoke out the walkers. Like, no one's tried it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what is your favorite quality about Carol? What do you, when you think about her, you think about her fondly, what is it that really stands out to you about her? Oh, man, that's tough. There's so many wonderful qualities about Carol. Um, I, uh, I, yes, cookies. <laughs> she's got good cookies. She's got good cookies. All yeah. right. She's, she's capable and she, she cares. And I, I think that I would certainly want her on my team. Yeah. I think we all would. You know, she sees things. Her heart's in the right place. Of course it is. And <laughs> it, she sees things that no one, that other people don't see. She was training the kids to fight before anyone else thought they should. She really does seem to have this, uh, this perspective that, that not everyone else has. And I think she's caring less and less what everybody else thinks, too. Yeah, good, good. Uh, someone else who had uh, quite a journey this past season was uh, Morgan, who has... It's... He's had, a, he's, he's had a tough time retaining his humanity, but adjusting, he's got to live by his code. And there are so many times that I shout, just pick up the gun and shoot that guy, man! Be careful what you wish for, Chris. <laughs> Aww. So what, are you, so what are you thinking now for where he's at? Is he ready for this war? Is he ready for this world? Um, I think... Morgan's, like he says in the trailer, Morgan's stuck. He's stuck because he, he knows exactly what he's got to do in order to protect the people that he's come to care about and in certain cases love. And, um, but he doesn't want to do it because it means going against his own code. And so he's stuck. Just kill him! <laughs> so, um, if only it was that simple. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's stuck. And um, in a weird way, he has to go to war in order to find any peace. Do you see what I did there? Nice. Is he still at war with himself, though? Is he still, is he still at war with himself, or do you think he's, yeah. at the beginning of season eight, is he clear? Yeah, that's a great, well done. Uh, is he clear? I, 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 I think Morgan got clear a ways back. And um, I, think he know, I think he knows, and I think it's one of the things that the writers have been very brave about, is keeping Morgan's argument alive. Morgan's argument isn't about survival. We already know how to survive. We've all survived this long and we've found other places where other people have survived. Morgan's argument is about how we live. And, uh, and that's an important argument to have. It's an important conversation to have. And they've kept, on him, kept him trying to argue that point. And he will argue it until he is no more. Yeah. It, so he's, he's still retaining his humanity. He's still absolutely he's retaining. He's fighting for it because otherwise, what are we fighting for? Well, that seems, to be the big, that seems to be the big theme of the show is how do you retain your humanity in a, in a world that's decaying when you, even if, as, a, as a living person, are decaying, trying to fight these things. And this is the, how... The big battle that we're having, the reason why we're banding together to go against Negan is because what we're saying is we don't want to live like that. We don't want to live. We don't want to live where we all hold Whoa. up our hand. Hold up our hand. <laughs> hold the phone. <laughs> so I can say that I've never met the fella. So it's <laughs> so funny. But we, you know, we you know, Rick's big dilemma is I'm not gonna. I can't bow down. I can't live with that guy's heel on my neck. And that's what we're fighting for. So we're, whether we like it or not, we are fighting to decide how we live. And Morgan's just the one person who just won't shut up about it. <laughs> A bit like me. Uh, Austin. Austin Emilio. Uh, 
I mean, it, you know, do you, by the way, uh, do you guys trust Dwight at this point? You trust him? You don't trust him. Yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> Poor Austin. <laughs> I got, I got like three yeses, which means <laughs> I must be a really bad actor. Are, are the, do you, if you were in, if you were in Rick's position, if you were in that group's position, would you trust Dwight? Maybe. I, I, oh, that sucks. That's he true. said, if you didn't hear him, he said Dwight I, has two I faces. The, it's I heard cool. the two face thing. That's, yeah. that's good. I, I like that. Very symbolic. Um, Thank you for that. Uh, would, would I trust Dwight? I would respect the ballsiness of the guy. Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily... Well, I, I mean, the decisions he's, he's making are really high-stake decisions. Like, you know, we, we left off where he goes by himself to Alexandria to tell them, you know, what what he thinks of Negan and, you know, gives them a little insight. And that's, that takes some cojones. Um, and not many people are doing that. Uh, so I'd give him a chance. <laughs> give the guy a chance. Well, he seems to be one of the only <laughs> rays of hope that they have for, for breaking down that compound and, and getting in there. But there are so many times where Negan is just flaunting Sherry in front oh of... Me, yeah. me and Jeffrey can't even, uh, at least I can't, because it's hard for us to do scenes because he's such an asshole. <laughs> and, and, and like, sexy. A, a, it, it's amazing. <laughs> it's a, a, nice. he's a, he has a very sexy, sexy asshole. asshole. Um, but I really but, just went on Talking Dead be like, the hashtag tonight is sexy asshole. And then that's I'm yeah. never going to be able to. It's probably going to be a shirt soon. <laughs> it's going to be a weird one. <laughs> Make it. Run with it. But yeah, I mean, the, the asshole nature of the guy is unbelievable, you know? I mean, you know, we've, we, we've been dying over scenes. Yeah, there's like, a little oh bit God. of giggling that could happen. What? Do, that we giggle a lot, do the, yeah, the asshole I mean, nature that is Negan. And then we get serious about but it. But he loves you. And I don't know what the fuck you're talking about going to Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> is there a storyline you need to tell me? <laughs> Uh-oh. Two-Face. Uh -oh. Damn. Well, that, that was kind of a verbal Lucille right there. That was a little bit of a... Um, I want to I wanna welcome Caitlin to the uh, panel. This is her first Comic-Con experience. What does this feel like to you for the first time? Oh, it's great. This is, like, amazing. I don't know. You guys are so great. <laughs> This feels amazing. Like I just, I've had, I've gotten so much more energy now being in front of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the uh, Enid's story is, and I've actually seen a lot of JSS tattoos. Yeah, People will yeah. tattoo. I'm sure there's a bunch it's here a uh, as it. well. Just survive somehow. Just survive somehow. Mm -hmm. So, what can you say about Enid's journey, and how do you think Carl figures into that in any way? And is is she? Cause there was a minute where I didn't quite trust her. Because I thought, oh, she's. Oh, I think everyone did. Yeah. But that that kind of that kind of made her more fun, you know, bringing her in because no one really knew whether to trust her or not. She was a big mystery. Um, even when like a bit of her backstory came out, they're like, nah, she's still a wolf. Like, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> how how has she evolved in the past uh, couple um, seasons? She's definitely in a very different place than she was when she uh, first came into the show. When she first came in, she was very closed off, um, very wounded, and had a lot of walls built up around her, and not really letting anyone in. Um, but I think with uh, character Gwen coming into her life, and Maggie, and Carl, they all, yeah, they, <laughs> they kind of broke down those walls, and they made her see the world in a, a different light, and just she, they kind of gave her something to stay alive for. So just survive somehow, she still goes by it, but it's kind of got a different meaning now. It's not, you know, just survive somehow, it's more like just survive somehow for these people that are around me that I care about. Excellent. Um, 
In the season eight trailer, Tom Payne, it seemed like maybe there was a little bit of a uh, Morgan Jesus uh, thing happening there. A little bit of a showdown. Okay, you had to ask me that and not Lenny. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a little, little bit of entertainment that happens between them, um, which may be playful, maybe, you know. Uh, We're just uh, working out. We're yeah, just working yeah. Out. It's a, it was an interesting, um, whenever what that was came up in the script, it was, it's an it was an interesting thing for me because uh, it was kind of exciting because I've been training a lot for the, for the character in the show and, and it's exciting for me um, to be involved with another character who kind of like knows what he's doing and um, to have them don't surround each other a bit. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it really. I'm really excited um, for this season and for Jesus to be part of a group a bit more than he has been before. And, um, and I think Maggie and the, and the whole situation with Maggie and, and uh, Sasha at, at the hilltop and, and how they were and, and Enid being there has helped him, yeah, like, you know, it's, it's a nice little family atmosphere. Um, help bring him in and and, uh, and make him feel more part of something. The two sisters and the gay best friend? Yeah. That's, that's our sitcom show, is the two sisters and the gay best friend. Yeah, that was a name for it. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was nice, and now he feels like there is something that he can fight for and, and be involved in and, and be a part of. Um, also, I was, yeah, I was just excited to get involved in the fighting aspect of the show and, and show off a bit of what I've been working on. So that's really ex been exciting for me to bring that into the show as well, because there wasn't really any, like martial arts or anything, aside from uh, Morgan and his stick work. Yes, but it's very fine stick work. Yes. Um, I'm, gonna add, we're, I'm gonna ask one more question myself and then uh, we're gonna have some audience questions. So uh, please, please, okay, very calmly, very calmly, very calmly. Um, but I wanna ask Norman, you know, cause this past season, <laughs> season seven was real hard. You know, Dar Daryl was kind of like, you know, Negan was treating him like his pet. He was grooming a pet, like another Dwight or something, or another, another guy to have under. And, you know, to see the reaction of people to the season eight trailer, people want to see uh, Daryl riding away on a motorcycle from an explosion. Like, that's what, that's what people want to see. So They're fun, yeah. <laughs> I like that. So what are, what are you most excited about for season eight? I mean, like Andy said, the, you know, the, the band's back together, and it's, it's, yeah, to kick that guy's butt. And, you know, it, it's, it's, this season really is two big teams against each other, and it's, it's all out 100 miles an hour the entire way. But it's, it's, I love you back. Wow, this looks like Studio 54 all of a sudden up in here. Um, but yeah, it, you know, he's, he's going a bit rogue at times, and he's, he wants revenge, you know? Um, by the way, you should also watch Norman's other show, Ride. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you for that, Chris. What are you riding this next? And what are you riding the next one? Well, the, Jeffrey and I have an episode. We're in Spain together, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, Dave Chappelle and I go from North Carolina to Savannah, which was brilliant. Um, there's a bunch of good stuff. There's a good season of that show. Excellent. All right, so now uh, this is, we open up the floor to questions. What is your name and what is your question? Uh, my name is Justin. And what's and your question, Justin? Uh, I just wanted to know exactly why, okay, this for Norman Reedus. And you're a great actor, by the way, I like you. Uh, I like however, you too. However, <laughs> Daryl the character, however, I, I couldn't be a fan of because I feel like you got Glenn killed, man. You know. <laughs> How dare you! Yeah, oh, no, thank I'm sorry, I had to ask. Poor Justin. Th thank you. you know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Justin, you know. I, I have to say, I feel bad for you. When you woke up this morning, I don't think you thought, boy, I wonder if everyone's going to boo me at Madison oh, Square Garden I, I, tonight. I, 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 <laughs> but you know, boo. you understand, they're just protecting, they're protecting him. But I hear what you're saying, so how do you respond to that? Well, I mean, I, you know, when we did the last one, when that happened, we were driving to that cemetery to do that premiere, and I, I'm sitting with Jeff in the car, and I go, God, I hope they don't blame me for this. I just, I never thought about this. And he goes, that's what I'm gonna do. It's your fault. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> and then he gets up there and he says it, and I was like, no, he did not do that. Um, but I mean, you know, it's, I, I, think, I think that's gonna weigh heavy on Daryl's head forever. You know, I don't think, he, I think when they had him in the cell and eating the dog food and all this stuff, I think he was allowing himself to be taken. I don't think, 
I don't think he, he had any fight in him. He, he, he deserved it. And then when they showed him the, the picture of Glenn, he was like, if you can't fight for yourself, fight for that guy. And that's what gave him the strength to get out of there. So I, I think he's going to be with him forever, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for your question. Uh, over here, hi, what is your name? Hi, um, I'm Jill. You look amazing. Thank you. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Did you make the bat yourself? Awesome. Yeah, I made it myself. It looks incredible. Uh, um, so, Jill, what is, who's your question for? What is your question? Um, first of all, I'm a I've been a huge fan of Walking Dead since the very beginning. And um, I love this cast from start to finish, all of you. Um, Melissa, you are my queen. <laughs> Norman, you are my prince. Yeah. Take it. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you are my king. God yeah. bless you. <laughs> You're amazing. I have followed your career since you were Denny on Grey's Anatomy. Thank you. <laughs> but my question is, um, if Negan was ever backed into a corner with one of um, Rick's people, who would you choose for him to be in that situation with to get out of it? Ooh, that's a really good question. I didn't hear what you said, but... <laughs> Salmon B? <laughs> Salmon Dean. Oh, the supernatural. A little supernatural. <laughs> All right, let's just gonna stick to this show for now. Um, <laughs> I think I'd be... I think if it was a dire situation and I... Who I'm most familiar with is probably Grimes yes. at this point. I've spent a lot of time with old Ricky here. <laughs> um, and I've spent some really quality time as well with Daryl. Yes. So I probably, out of everybody, because I know them the most, I've spent the most quality time with them as a character on the show, and I'd pick one of these guys. And I couldn't go yes. wrong with either one. I agree. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jill. Thank you very much. What is your, what is your name? Uh, hi, my name is Chris. Hey, Chris, me too. What's your question? <laughs> um, so uh, this is actually directed towards you, Jeffrey, and I'm, I want to be the first one to mention, up, uh, to mention Danny, um, but I've recently been watching Grey's Anatomy as well, and seeing... <laughs> <laughs> this is the weirdest Walking Dead panel I've ever been a part of. Yep. Uh, seeing you uh, act in that show, and it's, su it's such a different character, and I, I really started to feel for Danny, and then... Realizing again how I've known you from Walking Dead as a very it's a character. it's a mind fuck. Yeah very <laughs> much so. Um, so I was wondering this is open to all of the actors how uh, Different is it playing a character on Walking Dead where you're in this post-apocalyptic world where everything is going to hell um, To anything else you've really done in the past uh, Yeah, anyone if anyone wants to jump in with that uh, how, how different is this to anything else that you've done in the past? It's a lot different. I'll, I'll go since no one's talking. Um, I mean, between those two characters, that's a pretty big jump yeah. in personalities and, and well, everything. Uh, language used. Um, <laughs> but I love playing Denny, but I, as far as like fun and being in a world with people that I want to go to work with every day, this wins every day, all day. For real. Uh, to be part of the Walking Dead world, this cast, this crew, these writers, uh, AMC is, is, is one of the best places you can be. And I wouldn't change it for anything. Yes, and the fans. the fans. What the hell was I thinking? Well, I guess then this question is for Andy. Andy, what do you think of Danny on Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm sorry. Is it... Denny or Denny? Denny. Danny, I, I hate it. <laughs> Denny is astonishing. <laughs> and I weep. I use, actually use Denny as a preparation for <laughs> most of the scenes I'm being tortured by Negan. <laughs> what, is, uh, what is your name in question? I'm Jessica. I thought you were going to say Diana, but all I'm right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazon um, Prime. I love all you guys. You guys are all incredible and amazing. And Norman Reedus, ever since Boondock Saints, I fell in love. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah. I 
I'm also a big fan of the Telltale games. Are you guys going to bring Clementine or Javier or anybody into the show? Oh, wow. Question for you. Nope. <laughs> oh, come on. That was such a quick answer. Did you have another question? Just so, since, since you, you waited in line, do you have another question? Or was that, that was your question? No, that's it. OK, you. well, it was nice no, to meet you. I mean, uh, honestly, like, we love Clementine, and those games are fantastic. But I like that there are different elements to each iteration of The Walking Dead that you can only get in those iterations. Uh, things like Daryl not being available in the comic, Clementine only being available in the games. And I think if we cross-pollinate too much, it takes away from what makes uh, Walking Dead special in all the different genres. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. And amazing cosplay, too. Amazing cosplay. Uh, what is your name? Hey, guys. My name is Janelle. I'm so excited to be here. First time. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thank Give you. Give her a round of applause for being here for the first time. OK, what is your question? My question, OK, I'm going to start by saying this is a fan theory, and I've read about it. So I wanted to ask the people, the right people, to see if it's correct, or will be. Um, is there any possibility that Daryl and Jesus will get together. Yes. <laughs> Kirkman? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I, never say never, but uh, who knows? Hey, There's a couple people on here I'm supposed to get together with already, so I don't know. Maybe it'll be a big orgy. I have no idea. I mean, it is the apocalypse. Do it now! Do it now! Do, do it, it now. now! Do it now! This right, is I New try, York. I, I live here. I know it could go down. So I tried, you know. I you tried. never know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. You have very pretty possible. eyes, though. Anything's possible. This is the weirdest panel Kiss. ever. It started with a worm. Kiss! <laughs> hey, 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 relax down there. Relax. You don't have to tell them to do that. You could just write it, and then they have to do it. Uh, Why are you telling him this? Just, thank you so much for your question. Nice to meet you. What is your name? Hi, my name is Nadine. Hi, Nadine. What's your question? I am such a huge fan. I'm sure everyone here feels like you are an extension of our family. So thank you so much for that. We feel when you feel. Um, so my question is for Andy Lincoln and Lenny James. Um, both of you have gone to deep and dark places and uh, you emerge from them, do you feel that there's a bit of a yin and yang between your characters? I, 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 think, I think there's no coincidence that these are the first, you know, they share a common history. They were the first people to meet on the show, and I think that there is a sense that they are twin. They, I love the fact that, I mean, the, the, the reality was we've been trying to get Lenny back on the show since, how long? Since season three or two. He's just too, he's yeah. just too busy. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, exactly. And, and I love this calling out. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Better late than that. That was exactly what I was about to say. You've read my mind. And, um, but yeah, I think they are. I think that there's a certain sense that, you know, they're diametrically opposed. I never thought I'd get that word in to this panel. Um, with their ideologies at the moment. And they, it is strange because I've, I've realized I haven't sort of acted with Lenny much. Uh, of late. This season I've been acting every scene with him, but um, that was, I'm just trying to cover my tracks because I know Scott Gimple's watching the, li <laughs> the live stream. <laughs> um, but yes, what was the question? Just about... The yin and yang. Yeah, the yin and the yang. Yeah, and I feel more Rick. yin. <laughs> Lenny? Does that make me yang? I guess You've so. always been my yang. <laughs> You've always been my yin. Um, my yin. I, I, I think the relationship between Morgan and Rick is kind of Shawshank. You know, it's that kind of, it's, a, it's an ongoing kind of friendship and it's going to travel for a long time and sometimes they're going to be together and sometimes they're going to be opposed, but they're g forever going to be linked. You know, they were, they, they, right at the beginning of this, these two men met and, um, and each of them uh, made a promise, made a bond. And after the worst thing that happened to Morgan, he set out on a journey to find the only other person he knew in the world, and that was Rick. Mm -hmm. So these two guys are linked and bonded like Red and the other fella. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm coming to see you in Walker Stalker in Atlanta. Fantastic.
And Nadine, you're right. It is, it is so much about family. And the, 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 the part of the message of the show is you may not agree with what the other person does all the time or their methods or what they're going through or how they go about it. But at the end of the day, they're your family. You know, and you love them and you've got to stick together. And that's how you survive. Uh, what is your name, sir? Hey, my name is Ray. And what's your question, Ray? Uh, so I have a two-part question uh, for the creative team. Um, congratulations on 100 episodes. It's amazing. You guys have made it. But my question is really about the end which is, have you thought about how this whole Walking Dead series would end? Well, you're really eager to wrap this up. And... Oh, no! No, Ray, run for it! Run back to your many pizza places. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just go ahead and, I'll just go ahead and say I was lying about the million episodes. <laughs> At the beginning. You've uh, said before that you know you you, you have you don't know when. Nine hundred thousand, but, 900, you know, 000, but yeah. we might not make it to a million. But you, you you said before, I've heard you say before that whenever that day is, and hopefully it's no time soon, but you know where the show lands. Yeah, I, I mean I know what we're building to. It's just, you know, I can barely see it from where we are now. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I am happy to hear that. Yeah, oh, I mean uh, you you have to do the work because you know it, when we get to that point when you are all old and gray. Uh, and, and I'm dead. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, you want to be able to look back and go, oh man, they did this little thing here that, you know, you know, works there. And oh, and they were indicating this. And, and you want to know that we kind of knew where we were going along the way. And that's, that's very important. So, are you, you saying know, there are clues? Are there clues? <laughs> People should be When you look back, you'll see like, oh, that happened because of this and that happened because of that. But uh, uh, so you have to plan for it, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen anytime soon. All right, what Calm was your other, down. What I was feel your other like question? Everyone's on pins and, and needles. For the, for, for the cast. Season eight's the last season. No, don't say that. <laughs> Why would you say that to them? Why would you say that to these people? He's lying. I'm kidding. More booze are coming. And for the cast, if your character had to die, by a zombie, what would be your creative way of how would you want your character to Ray, be? Ray, you're taken a real out? bleak know, character. Really you, you, <laughs> when's this gonna end? How you guys wanna die? <laughs> <laughs> what, how, has anyone thought about like. I, like that, I love that somebody said, don't answer. None of them Don't answer. answer. <laughs> don't even put it out there. Don't answer. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's hear from uh, Jesus. Have you thought about if, if you have a good. Let's, let's no, hear some I suggestions. I haven't thought about that. Wait, wait, no, I haven't thought about that. Sorry. <laughs> it's, a zo it's a zombie barber. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, hey, Tom, I, I haven't thought about it either. That's great. Thank you, Robert. Solidarity with not thinking about dying by a zombie killing. <laughs> However it happens, you'll be back three days later. That's a joke. Uh, guys, come on. Come on. It was right there. Um, thank you so much, Ray. Thank you so much. You're a kind, you're a kind man, Ray. That's not booing Ray. All right. <laughs> I think we just have time for one more question, and that might be you. What is your name and question? Hi, I'm Kim. Hey, Kim, what's your question? Uh, well, first, I just want to say, bouncing off of what that guy said, if Daryl dies, we riot. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if, 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 if that ever happens, I'm not going to work, because I'm the first damn face you see when the... I would be like, uh, everyone, please be calm. <laughs> Chris, we will give you no warning. <laughs> I have a feeling the host of Talking Dead would die before Daryl, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, Kim, what's your question? Okay, my actual question is, so what we're going to see in this, ne in this next season is the war, but what I'm curious about is, so Negan has his saviors, and he's like their leader, and they already know their fighting style, whereas like the rest of everybody, it's like the three communities coming together to like just go crazy. So like, how, does that put them at a disadvantage, the fact that they have never worked like properly together? Like some of them only just met. Just watch the first episode. Yeah. You'll see it all. I'm just going to tell you one thing. It's taken 100 episodes for Rick Grimes to come up with a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Fantastic. That is an excellent place to wrap up the panel. I just want to say to you guys, though, sincerely, I just want to say to you guys, I s what? You want one more? No, I, wanna, I just want to say Oh, you want to answer? Okay. One thing real quick. So Tuesday... Uh, we have a ceremony at the Smithsonian and we are donating props. Uh, so the show has sort of uh, earned its place in uh, our pop culture history. So we're donating, we're donating a few pieces. So what I love is the idea that uh, Dorothy's shoes, 
and Archie Bunker's chair and Herschel's head. <laughs> we'll all be somewhere in the same building. Uh, and also, I wanted to say a quick shout out to, to the rest of the cast that couldn't be here because they worked their asses off. All the writers and Scott Kimple who are busting their butts writing the show in LA. Walking Dead returns October 22nd. Season 8 premiere followed by Talking Dead. You guys mean the world to us. Thank you so much for standing in line. Thank you so much for being here. Be kind to each other. And have a great weekend. Have a great rest of your con. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>